name is Erin Sutherland, and my speech is about how to cook or bake at a high altitude. There are many reasons one would need to cook or bake at a high altitude, be it travel or the fact that one has moved from a place of low altitude to a place of high altitude. Many different factors affect cooking and baking at different altitudes, and they can harm the end products if steps aren't taken to counterbalance the effects. The first thing to understand is why cooking and baking is so different at different altitudes. Cooking and baking can be broken down into a science, and that science tells us why the end result could be different. When one is at a high altitude, the air pressure is going to be very different than it is at sea level. The higher the altitude means the pressure in the air is going to be much lower. Low air pressure causes leavening or rising of the batter and dough to happen way too quickly. This is a problem because everything that is baked has to do some degree of leavening for the product to turn out fully cooked as well as looking correctly. The reason behind rapid leavening is the fact that gas bubbles in the dough or batter tend to collect together at a high altitude and burst, leaving the batter or dough very flat. At a lower altitude, the gas bubbles are distributed evenly, and when they do burst, they still allow some sort of leavening to occur without leaving the end product flat. The second main factor that affects cooking and baking at a higher altitude is the difference in atmospheric pressure. As the altitude grows, the atmospheric pressure decreases. This causes water or liquid to boil at a much faster rate. This will affect cooking because it causes the batter or dough to have a very high evaporation process. Water or liquid will be taken out of the batter or dough, leaving it pretty dry and leaving the end product very hard. A certain degree of moisture has to leave the batter or dough while cooking because if you think about a cake, the cake batter is wet, but the cake is drier. However, a moist cake is how you want it to turn out, and a dry cake is what you get if the liquid and the batter or dough is not counterbalanced. So, since the science behind baking and cooking gives reasons behind why cooking and baking is so different at a higher altitude, now there is the task of figuring out how to counterbalance these factors. Air pressure is probably the easiest to counterbalance because for every 1,000 feet, you can add or take away specific ingredients and there is no guesswork. Since air pressure affects the leavening or rising of batter and dough, the best way to counterbalance this is to add baking soda. If a recipe calls for two tablespoons of baking soda or powder, add an extra one for every 1,000 feet. This will cause there to be extra chemicals in the batter or dough that will help the batter remain separated, as well as adding yeast will help the bubbles remain separated as well. Adding or taking these ingredients away will help the end product to not only look much better, but ensuring and complete baking all the way through. Counterbalancing the atmosphere of pressure is a little harder because there is an element of guesswork. Since the air pressure deals with the drying out of the batter or dough, one has to be very careful when adding liquid because it could make the dough like a batter or the batter way too soupy. The first thing to add when dealing with atmospheric pressure is an extra egg or egg white. This will increase the liquid in the dough or batter and make sure that when it goes into the oven, there is extra liquid to dry up, leaving the correct amount of liquid in. Also, if there is milk or water added into the recipe, add an extra tablespoon of the liquid per 1,000 feet for the same reason. Both of these things will help out the baking process because there will be more liquid in a higher temperature. Now here's where the guesswork comes in. The main thing to watch after one puts the dough, into the batter, the dough or batter into the oven is how long it stays in there. Ovens get hotter faster at a higher altitude and the baking is different. One needs to watch the dough or batter bake because many times, if you do add more liquid to the recipe, if left in the oven too long, the extra liquid will bake out and you'll be right back where you started. There is no certain time or subtracting of minutes to help with this part of the baking process. It's just important to keep an eye on the food and make sure it's where it needs to be. So now that the why of, that, the why of baking at a different altitude is different and the counterbalancing of the factors was looked at, the final factor is why this is relevant. Many people, including those of us who have lived in Kansas our whole lives, have adapted to cooking or baking at a high altitude and we see no difference. However, this is important to me and my family and those of us who travel because the difference in between, for example, Kansas and Colorado is pretty big. These factors are important for entertaining purposes as well as just having good tasting food. Food will cook differently in Florida than it does in Kansas and differently in Kansas than it does in Colorado. And if you travel often or move you or have the need to entertain, these are helpful tips.